<laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Raul Garcia. I'm the program director for American Indian Changing Spirits. It is my distinguished honor to present Mr. Justin Farmer, a brilliant mass basket master, collector, and authority on all Native American basketry. He's from the Epi Nation. Thank you. Um, I'm registered with the BIA. As a, uh, as a mission Indian uh, from San Diego County. Um, uh, we call ourselves Epi, or sometimes Degueno. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll say right offhand, uh, the, the term Kumeyaay sometimes is being used now uh, to describe um, um, Southern California Indian baskets. And 30 or 40 years ago, there were no Kumeyaay. Uh, except in, in Baja, California. Uh, so the term Kumeyaay now has, has crept in, into Southern California. Uh, the word Kumeyaay used to be uh, for the people in Northern Baja, California. Uh, okay. Uh, they speak the same language, which is the Hokan language, that the people in San Diego uh, uh, speak. Uh, that's Hokan. Uh, and guys, um, uh, particularly at the San Diego Museum of Man said, well, if you speak the same language, you must be the same people. And um, the Kumeyaay uh, are kind of popular in San Diego. So um, uh, now virtually everyone in Southern California that that is Hokan, speaks Hokan, are considered to be Kumeyaay. Uh, I don't like it um, because um, um, the Pomo people speak Hokan and the, the, um, the people on the Klamath River speak Hokan and the people in northeastern California all speak Hokan. So um, we don't call those people Kumeyaay. Uh, but anyway, um, so um, uh, and just a little bit about myself. My, uh, my grandmother was, um, uh, was born in San Pasqual, which is in San Diego County. She was a full-blood uh, uh, Epi. But she was purchased uh, as an infant um, uh, by a, a, um, uh, an Anglo family. And um, so she, she was owned um, by this family until she married. And she, she was married when she was 16 years old. And um, if, if anyone is interested in that, that whole business about slavery, 
uh, I have a copy of the, the state uh, constitution, this in uh, 1850, and then it was amended in 1860 uh, that defines how you buy people, uh, any people. Um, now, you can also buy Chinese, but Chinese were not, uh, you know, marketable. But um, uh, uh, yes, California Indians were. Uh, and the, um, uh, you could not only buy an infant, which my grandmother was, but um, uh, if a person got thrown in jail and they happened to be Indian, then they were sold at a slave market in, in L.A. Every Monday morning, they they were auctioned off to the highest bidder, and um, um, uh, they they were then owned by the people who who bought them. So, uh, okay, and because my grandmother had been been purchased, um, she was taught. Well, first of all, she could neither read nor write. Um, she and her husband owned some, a lot of uh, range land, and she signed a deed for 8,000 acres of land with an X. Now, not many Indian people could, <laughs> first of all, even own that, that kind of land. They were cattle people. Um, but um, uh, uh, she did not, she was taught not to like Indians. And I think many of you here probably have gone through a lot of that, that um, the, um, um, uh, just the ill feeling about Indians. So she would not allow an Indian into her front door. And she was a full blood. Um, she, um, um, uh, she cooked for, she, there, there were cattle people and there were sheep, and uh, she cooked for all of them so they could eat at her table as long as they came in the back door. Um, now, my mother was raised the same way. My mother was one of, of 11 children, uh, and she was raised the same way, that we didn't allow an Indian in the front door of our house. Uh, and that's the way I was raised. Uh, uh, now, I'm one of five siblings, and um, I'm the only one who, who admitted to being an Indian. The rest of us left. <laughs> Uh, they claim my mother would just deny the fact that she was Indian, and her mother was a full blood. So, um, okay. And because of this, we we were not allowed, or I was, yeah, our family was not allowed to have any Indian art uh, objects in the house. Uh, now, the um, um, basketry, of course, uh, was was one of the big things, and. Um, uh, and I got into basketry because I guess it was denied me. And uh, that's a very common thing. So, so um, uh, during high school, I probably went through pretty much the same thing you people do. You, know, uh, you, you don't, you're not socially acceptable. Uh, so because I didn't live on the reservation and we were, were fairly large landowners, we, we had um, an apple ranch. And because of that, our, our financial status was better than most of the white guys. But you still were not as good as a white guy because you're Indian. So, so okay, but um, um, I got interested in, um, uh, in, in basketry fairly early but my mother would not tolerate a, a, an Indian basket in the house. Uh, um, okay, so um, during, um, um, well, after I graduated from high school, uh, well, I went into the Army uh, in 1944. That was the old Army Air Corps. Uh, actually, I'm 90 years old. So, uh, 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 and. Um, uh, I was treated okay in the Army, but as soon as I went to college, then I was an Indian. And um, uh, uh, I had to work um, uh, most of my life. I, I could have gone through the GI Bill that would have paid the tuition and so forth, but um, I felt the government didn't owe me anything, so um, uh, I did not use the GI Bill. Um, the uh, 
the first job I had in Stanley was in um, was at a, a state mental hospital where I worked uh, 53 hours a week at 150 a month, and I paid my board and room out of that. Uh, so, um, uh, but anyway, um, uh, I started collecting Indian baskets um, in um, about. Um, well, soon after I, went, I graduated and, and you know got into the workforce, uh, and um, um, uh, I concentrated pretty much on um, Southern California or Mission baskets. And uh, do, does everyone know who the Mission people are? I guess no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, um, um, the Bureau of Indian Affairs registers uh, tribes, um, and um, you know there are the Navajos and the Hopis and so forth, um, but they called everyone in Southern California south of Ventura County simply as Mission. And the reason that the, the name came is the um, basketry, um, uh, refers to either Degoño or Juanaño or Luceño or uh, 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 re with a reference to a mission in in southern in um, yeah southern and central California uh, southern California, uh, San Diego County um, because uh, uh, we were affiliated with the mission at San Diego. We were known as the Iguanos. And the people that were affiliated with the mission at San Juan Capistrano were one Anos, or Luis Anos at San Luis Ridge. Uh, so that's what the, mission, the uh, BIA refers to us. So. All right. Now, uh, uh, most of the arts and the culture that we know today from, from California deals with baskets. Um, because baskets are, um, uh, and uh, here, here are some baskets here, for, just from my collection. Um, uh, they, uh, uh, basketry has really gone through an evolution. Uh, when um, the Spaniards came into what is now California in the, the middle, late 1700s, they established the mission in San Diego in 1776 or 79. Uh, uh, and then there were 21 missions um, uh, uh, in California between 1770 and 1820s. Okay. Uh, and up until that time, basketry was, was a utilitarian type of thing in addition to being an art. And the um, the Arctic, uh, the Arctic, the well well designed uh, basketry were used often as gifts, um, but most of the baskets were um, were used were utilitarian. Um, okay, and this happened um, um, up until the Spaniards um, established the missions. And that was from the 1770s to the 1820s. Uh, all right, um, but once the the uh, Indians were taken, well, um, the, the Spaniards came in with their herds of cattle. They, uh, the, their, their, those missions were big cattle ranches, and to run cattle ranch, a uh, cattle ranch, you have to have uh, labor, and here were free labor. Um, all right, so the um, uh, the Spaniards took in to um, to many of these missions um, uh, Indians by the hundreds, sometimes by the thousands, um, and as soon as they came into the the uh, mission, then they had to relinquish their former culture and adopt Catholicism, and Catholicism would not allow. Um, for any Indian art, and the missionaries looked at basketry as an Indian art, so um, um, 
no more baskets, no more Indian baskets. If you want to weave a basket, you did it in the Spanish way. And when I'm talking about Spanish, I'm talking about Maine, or uh, uh, Spain. Okay, so um, by the, uh, um, about the 1820s or 30s, the, um, uh, the, the Indian culture was almost stamped out. Uh, the, um, uh, when the missions were secularized in 1834 or thereabout, that period, uh, and um, um, the land was given back to the, the Mexicans at that time, because Mexico now uh, owned California. So um, uh, the, the Mexican culture was pretty much the same as the Spanish. Uh, and um, um, and it was not like Indians. And the Indians were turned loose, and most of those Indians that were turned loose in 1834 um, had, were born and raised in the mission. They, they no longer could speak the language. They had lost their culture because it had been stamped out of them. Okay. Um, now, in, um, um, in the late 1840s, um, the, um, there was a band of, of about a dozen Americans uh, who conducted what is known as the Bear Flag Rebellion. Now, is it, does everyone know about, about the Bear Flag Rebellion? Okay, uh, it was probably, probably uh, a dozen uh, Americans living in Southern California, uh, well, actually in California, uh, and they staged a rebellion, and they defeated the entire Mexican army. Uh, and they established a republic. So California, after it became, after it was owned by the Mexicans and the Spaniards, uh, it became a republic. Um, and it, um, um, there were, uh, what, 10 or 12 members of the entire nation, that are, and they were all white. Okay. Um, then, uh, within a very short period, uh, uh, the U.S. government then took over the, uh, the Republic, and it became a territory. So then California became a U.S. territory. Uh, and, um, and in 1850, California became a state. Um, and uh, at that time, most of the people most of the, the uh, non-Indians in California were from the southern states. Uh, okay, uh, and the southern, yeah. oh, okay. The southern states were, were basically slaveholders. And when California was um, uh, applied for membership into the, the uh, uh, United States, they wanted to become a slave state. And the U.S. Congress would not permit that because uh, uh, in 1850, we were in the height of the gold rush. And, and California was a very wealthy area. And the U.S. Congress did not want that wealth to go to a slave state. All right. So, um, so when the co state constitution was written, um, uh, it did not talk about sla uh, about slavery, but it talked about indenturing. Now, if if you know about indenturing, indenturing simply means you own somebody. Uh, you know, you indenture a, a man to to a craft, and he's owned by the craft owner. Uh, all right. And that's how this the business about buying and selling um, uh, Indians became uh, uh, a common thing. And the Constitution, and I have a copy of, of that portion of the Constitution here. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Constitution was then amended in 1860. And that's when they talked about the auctions, when, when you actually auctioned off um, uh, people. Uh, okay. Uh, and during this period, Indian basketry was went down the tubes. There was just nothing being done, and people would not want to admit they're Indian because they might be sold to somebody. All right. Okay. So.
during the um, the late 1700s, there was a fluorescence of, of uh, basketry, and um, uh, and that flourished up until about uh, the 1820s, um, and it, it started downhill in the 1820s, and by 1850, ba uh, uh, Indian basketry was almost stamped out. Uh, all right. Um, and during this period, when when uh, Indian uh, the Indian auctions were taking place, most of those were men, um, and the um, and when they're uh, endangered out to a, a uh, say a grape grower, then what does the family do? And the fam the the women of the family then had to take over the culture. Um, and they had to they had to put beans on the table, and uh, the way they did that was they resurrected uh, much of this Indian uh, the basketry arts. So, um, so by about the late 1800s, um, the the basketry arts had then um, uh, been raised to to an acceptable thing. And about 1890 or thereabouts, um, there were some smart white people decided that, or they recognized that here was a culture uh, that was being fleshed down the target. Um, uh, these ladies have now brought that culture back. Um, and um, uh, so they started buying baskets. And um, uh, I had a basket that was made by, uh, uh, we called her Grandma Wasuna, that was, uh, was sold in Julian in Southern California um, for, I think it was $7.50. And it was a beautiful thing. It was so big and so high, had great, great detail. $7.50. Um, I know of a whole collection of baskets that were sold uh, in um, about the early 1930s for a dollar a piece. Um, um, but, uh, but now the, the art um, had, had progressed and the competition between women to, um, um, to really produce baskets um, was very competitive, uh, so the whole art uh, flourished. And that was called the Renaissance, the basket for Renaissance. But, but then, during the Depression, it, it died out because um, uh, even though a basket's only going to sell for $7.50, who's got $7.50? And I think, I don't know whether you're familiar with the Great Depression. It started in, in 1929 when the market hit the bottom, and it existed all through the 1930s, and um, uh, people were jumping off the, the, the buildings, committing suicide. Uh, um, the whole market just went all to pieces. All right, so, um, uh, so by about 1940, um, we got involved in a shooting war, yeah. the the first, uh, the Second World War, uh, and many of the Indian people. Um, uh, particularly the men uh, joined in the service. The, the percentage of, of uh, servicemen that were Indians was greater, much greater than, than uh, non-Indians. Um, so, uh, um, so again, that whole thing, now the men have gone, the women have to support themselves, so the, there was a resurrection then in basket making, because that, that's the thing they were good at. Uh, all right, so um, Indian basketry then uh, started uh, in uh, about the 1950s to, uh, to climb again. Uh, and, um, uh, and particularly in Northern California, it never had died out too much because Northern California was the boondocks. Uh, so um, um, by about 1970, uh, I started collecting seriously. And when I say seriously, uh, I owned um, 
uh, my first uh, collection was 215 Southern California mission baskets. Um, okay, and I wanted to to collect from the weaver herself. So I started in Ventura County or Santa Barbara County, actually, looking for Indian weavers. And by about 1970, there were no Indian weavers in Santa Barbara County, none. So then I went down to Ventura County, next county, uh, none. Los Angeles County, none. Orange County, none. Imperial County, none. Santa Barbara or San Bernardino County, none. Uh, 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 Riverside County had one weaver, but she was uh, quite elderly and she was not weaving, but she knew how. San Diego County had three, and all three of them were cousins of mine. Oh. Um, um, but they were not weaving for the market. Uh, uh, the, essentially, there was there was a, a market at auctions of old uh, 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 basketry, but very few were being made. So, so I and the one cousin was uh, Christina. Uh, was about my mother's age. Uh, so, uh, yeah, my mother was in her late 70s at that time. So, Christine was about that age. And she was still doing a little bit of weaving. Um, and um, so I went to her and asked her, first of all, I gave her hell for not teaching um, basketry. Um, and uh, I had commissioned her to make me a, a, a what I call a rattlesnake basket, and it was about so big around and about so deep and basin shaped, and it had the figure of a rattlesnake in, in it. Uh, and rattlesnakes were really in high demand, uh, and she agreed to make that basket for a hundred dollars. Uh, okay, um, when I picked it up. I gave her 150 for it because I felt so guilty about it. And I asked her, why aren't you teaching uh, this? And her response was that, that it had taken her about 150 hours of weaving to make that bath, that one basket. 150 hours. Um, it took her almost that amount of time to go out gather the material, bring it in, prepare it like this, uh, size it and uh, trim it down, uh, and, and weave it. So she had something like 300 hours of, of labor in that one basket. And, and she says, you're going to pay me $100. Now she says, how much is that per hour? Yeah. Well, I, I know um, that that would be about a month and a half worth of work. That's right. That's right. Just to collect and do everything together, I just added yeah. it up in my head. Yeah. Got that it. would approximately be about a month and a half of work. Yes. Just and 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 she's getting a hundred dollars if she has a buyer. Yeah. 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 Okay. In my case, I gave her a hundred and fifty because she's a, um, a cousin of mine. Um, um, so. Um, uh, she did not, uh, say, I, I said, well, I want you to teach me how to make the baskets. Yeah. Okay. No, she said, because you're a man. Um, okay. okay. And I, my response was that a man weaver is better than no weaver at all. Sure. Right. So from there on, and that was in about the middle 1970s. Uh, so um, uh, she brought me up to speed, and then I started giving classes um, um, and I've given probably something like 40 different classes to them. Um, um, and um, where in 1970, there were three weavers, um, well, four county me, in all of Southern California. Southern California had about three quarters of the entire population of the state. And there were four Indian people. Uh, okay, after I started giving classes, now, We've, um, uh, uh, we have a hundred or so. Uh, okay, there is a, a statewide organization called CEBA, or California Indian Basket Weavers Association. Um, and there are somewhere between 700 and 1,000 weavers. 
I'm on the board of directors of that, and, um, um, uh, and we have annual uh, gatherings, um, um, and um, there will be maybe 500 people at one of those gatherings, and these are all Indian people. Uh, now, most of them are women, but there are a, a number of them that are men. And what I found in the classes I gave, probably 90% of my students were women. And, and a good majority of those were school teachers, uh, that they had to, to have that certification so for the, when they teach in the fourth grade or whatever it is. So, okay. And of those 90%, probably 5-10% um, of them would continue on to, to, make, uh, to learn and practice basket weaving. But of the 10% that were men, Probably 90% of those men continued on making baskets, and they made good baskets. Their artwork is, was great. Uh, so, the uh, uh, so what has happened is that although basketry used to be a woman's uh, uh, craft or art, um, um, generally those men who get involved in it are are good at it. Right. So um, uh, now. Uh, Abby Joe wanted to talk about materials, and the um, uh, I have written several books. Uh, there are two of them here, uh, and um, one of them is uh, that uh, you don't have here at that plant plant material. Um, and the um, um, I I buy and I sell basket, but uh, 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 but. In, um, in, in uh, my dealings with, uh, let's say, buying uh, baskets, very few um, sellers have any concept of what the material is that's used. Uh, the um, uh, 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 good example is uh, 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 creek dogwood. Uh, creek dogwood is used very extensively in the Yosemite area. Uh, as a red pattern material. And I went to a, a sale in um, Marin County uh, 10 years ago, something like that, wanting to, to get a basket that had creek dogwood in it. And there, was, and there was probably 200 dealers there. And not one dealer knew what creek dogwood looked like. Uh, I finally had to commission a woman to make me a basket uh, and it was so poor that I, I create or uh, commissioned a man to do it, and he gave me a nice basket. Um, um, big leaf maple. Uh, big leaf maple is is used very extensively uh, in the northern Sierras and across the, the northern part of the state, and even a little bit over onto the coast, and yet. Not one of the, those dealers at, at that Marine show knew what it was. And I bought two baskets from one dealer that had creek dogwood or had um, uh, big leaf maple in it, and he had no idea what it was. Uh, so I wrote a book on it. And um, um, uh, Amy has, a, um, uh, has some of those books. Are, are they here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's um, uh, it's called basketry uh, materials used in the Western North America, I think, something like that. And it, it deals with um, with materials used in the Southwest, and by the Southwest I mean New Mexico and Arizona, uh, over to California, and then up the coast to Alaska. Uh, and they've uh, surprisingly, there's only uh, I think I listed 29. Uh, species of, of uh, material. So there's a, a quite a bit of a commonality. Okay, in Southern California, uh, let's see. Oh, here's a good example. Um, this, this basket, uh, I have it listed as, uh, as Coelho. Uh, does everyone know the Coelho people? Yeah, they're the people in the, the um, uh, Coachella Valley, Palm, Palm Springs, and, um, and also in the mountains um, around Idlewild and Anza and so forth. Um, um, this 
uh, a basic, this, uh, I call it basal red, it's kind of a brown color, uh, is, uh, is juncus, and junk, this, this is juncus. When you, when you harvest it, it's a forest green, and this has been sitting in the sun for um, almost a month to, to bleach out the green. And if you look at it, and you're welcome to look at this, uh, uh, you'll see that the base here is kind of a brown color, and that's what this is. Uh, here, why don't we just pass that around? That is Juncus textilis. And, and there is, um, uh, 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 Jepson says, I think that there's 41 varieties of, of Juncus in California alone. And only about two of them are used. And that's, um, uh, that's right. When, um, in order to use that, you split it into thirds. Or uh, uh, I sometimes if they're very big, I'll split it into four pieces, uh, uh, and now that's the same same stuff that um, uh, except it's been split, and um, once it's split into thirds or, or quarters, then. Um, you have to trim it down to a consistent width. And I use a very scientific device here. Tin can lid. <laughs> All right. um, I, take, I take a nail and I punch a hole in it uh, of very varying size. So, uh, I take a nail and I hit one, one stroke here and then two, two or three strokes here and three or four so that they, they get gradually bigger. And um, with it, that split stuff, um, I send it through the, the first, the, the hole in the middle is the biggest. And that trims it down um, uh, one, one step. Then I start at the biggest of these. Can you see, can you see there's a root? Um, uh, and I just work it down until um, uh, I decide on the width that I want to use. And if you look at these baskets, the, the width of the stitch is, is, is very consistent. And that's the way you get consistency. It's, it's used in that same hole. Uh, and, uh, okay. Uh, now, uh, you'll notice in this basket, yeah, let's see it. Um, this this material here, oh, it's it. The black here is the same stuff, but you dye it with um, uh, iron, um, old rusty nails, um, um, and acorns. And the acorn gives tannin, and tannin is a, a mordant, mordant to, uh, and it sets the. Um, 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 uh, Sets, make, makes the uh, dye uh, uh, fat, like basically. Um, the, um, this material is sumac. And uh, here's some sumac that, that has been split but has not been sized. And it's, it's a, um, uh, a half brother to poison oak. If you, um, uh, you want to gather sumac, don't. <laughs> well, I've been doing this for 40 years, and um, um, uh, two or three years ago, I was uh, uh, deer hunting, and I was showing the, the son of the uh, buddy uh, what the material was. So I gathered up a bunch of it, and I'm splitting it, and I suddenly realized this isn't sumac. This is poison oak. Um, because it, it grows the same way. It grows in crumps and done. Uh, the difference is that, that sumac has an odor to it, whereas the poison oak doesn't. But, uh, but it's a much tougher, durable material, but it's harder to work with. And it takes probably five to ten times as long to get one of these to, to a weavy size as it does uh, um, junkets. Uh, okay. The, uh, uh, when you start weaving, uh, let's see.
Uh, here, here's the start of, of a basket, and it's not a real good one because I've grinded them out for, the, for the, some of these, um, that SEBA uh, convention, I give, give them away. Um, uh, that's the way a basket is started, and the material in the center is, uh, is yucca fiber. And here is the leaf from a yucca. Uh, I, I have an anvil out in my backyard, and I take a ball peen hammer, and, I, <laughs> and, I, and uh, I, I pound on it, and then work it back and forth. And that is the fiber that's used. Um, and that fiber is used for a lot of things. It, um, uh, it, it's normally twisted uh, in, into a cordage. Um, so, and it, it's strong. Uh, it's not as strong as milkweed or nettle. But, um, uh, and let's see. No, I guess I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Here's, here's some, um, is nettle. Here, I'll see. So you can see the difference in texture. The, um, the nettle is a, um, is a much finer, almost a, 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 a plastic uh, feel to it. Kind of a silky feel. But, um, um, okay. And the weaving um, is, uh, in Southern California, the weaving is, is almost exclusively uh, coiling. And these baskets are coiled. And when we say coiling, let's see. Here, here is um, um, a kind of a demonstration of coiling, and and that's simply a coiling, and it's a um, it's a sewing process. You um, uh, you penetrate uh, the coil underneath with an awl like this, and you use the the juncus or the sumac to um, to stitch it to hold it down. Um, so. Um, See well. Now I, I have some some uh, uh, coils. Now uh, many of the uh, Southern California weavers use a foundation of um, what's called deer grass, and this is deer grass. Uh, it um, it has thousands of little seeds up here, and. Um, the way I do it, I, I can I use one of these scientific devices to strip to strip the seeds off. I put them through here like this. I pull it through. These are just corn cobs. So, so I buy corn on the cob and I strip the, the corn off and eat that, and then dry this. And the the corn cob will will, um, uh, will mildew, but that doesn't hurt them at all. So, um, okay, here, here I just. <laughs> Um, okay, then now, uh, most of, uh, of um, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, here's, here's some more of that um, uh, yucca leaf, and you can see this leaf, how long it is here, and, and the, uh, the tips of it are very, um, uh, uh, very sharp. Okay, um, in... Central and Northern California, red bud is used very extensively for pattern materials. Um, and um, normally, you, you, you harvest red bud after the first frost. Um, this I gathered in August. So it, it doesn't have the nice red color that it should have, but... Um, yeah, it. Oh. Um, okay, uh, but it, it does turn red, and gen and that the red bud is used by many of the Northern California people, uh, Central and Northern California, for pattern material, the, the, the red bark, and you keep the bark on. Um, the, um, the the stuff that's split is it's, uh, I split it and then just coil it up to one. Now, uh, in a collection, if you go into a museum and 
you look at some really old baskets, uh, Southern California baskets, well, California baskets, um, you'll sometimes see what looks like a mold. And it's a white um, mold that, that develops on, on red bud. Uh, and the, um, it's called a blossom. And uh, most collectors would kill for just to have a basket that has that mold on it, the, or the bloom. Uh, but um, some museum people want to just scrape it off, and um, uh, you know that's sacrilege. Okay. Okay. Well, um, oh, um, in um, in the desert, it's, uh, these are our starts. Uh, if if anyone wants just one of these, um, take it. I, I I got a lot of them. Um, out in the, the desert, um, there, there, is, um, um, there are several weavers that use the root from Joshua tree. And uh, the Joshua tree root, uh, uh, Joshua is actually one of the cactus. Um, uh, uh, and um, it, um, it has a lot of, of real tiny um, roots like this, and some of them are are uh, you know th two or three feet long and uh, um, uh, now I'll I'll pass this around. The uh, uh, you can see how it um, um, how it comes uh, it grows at the base of of the Joshua tree itself, uh, and that's what that is. But it's, it's brittle and it's old, and I I don't use it, but I have it just you know. Um, okay, um, that. About the um, uh, so yeah so I'm going to sit down. When you get as old as I am, you got to sit once in a while. <laughs> That's it. So if there's any questions, um, uh, yeah. Uh, these baskets yeah. behind you. What? The baskets behind you are these all Southern California? Are these all? Uh, no. Um, this one. Oh, I, I bought these just to show different type. Um, Southern California uh, use um, a coiled method with what's called a bundle, a, a, a bunch or a bundle of foundation. Um, some people, um, and, and this is, is either Washoe or Northern Paiute, and they use uh, what's called one rod. Uh, uh, and, uh, oh, just a minute. Okay, um, you can pass it, pick it up with two hands, but it's a willow and red bud. The red bud is the, is the red material, and that's the stuff that's going around. And that is what's called one rod. Okay. Now, pass this around this. This is a regular coil basket with a with a bundle foundation. Is that a mission but, but it's coil. That's a mission basket. That that um, uh, coil. Um, here here is a basket. It's, I mean, these baskets. Um, uh, the value of them. The one that he has there is probably worth about. Five six hundred dollars. I bought this in an antique store. Um, it's from from the Seattle area, and I paid four dollars for it. <laughs> uh, now, that basket is twined, and the material in it is um, the very bottom is plated, uh, and and plating is a common thing in the southern United States. Uh, and that's uh, uh, cedar bark, yellow cedar, uh, and cedar is quite prevalent. Uh, okay, and the material in that that one is um, 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 uh, bear grass, which is the light colored, and the, and the coloring on it is an um, aniline dye, and see aniline dyes. Don't uh, they? F they don't f to hold their color at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, now this one. 
Uh, I'm not going to pass this around because it's pretty fragile. But this is a um, um, a northern Paiute basket, and it, it has kind of a typical um, uh, pattern design, and it's twined, and it's twined, uh, and the the black is um, sedge root. Uh, now sedge is um, bulrush or, or, or sedges, and the root um, uh, is uh, is a, a kind of a brownish black, but they dyed it to to, to get a consistent color, uh, and this is all. Uh, wool, split wool. Uh, the uh, 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 these were used uh, quite a bit for. Well, that's for storage, but some some of them come into a small uh, opening for water. Uh, so sometimes known as a tooth. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, um, that's that's just kind of an example of some. Of the the different weaving styles, and you can uh, you can come up and, and uh, look at this, but be careful. You can see how it's coming apart. Okay, so um, uh, any any other questions? Yeah. Now it's, I have a hearing problem. They have to shout. Are those, all those other baskets are they different tribes? These. Um, these are just simply from uh, Southern California. They're they're mission baskets, and um, uh, uh, I have one so big around and so tall, uh, but, but they're kind of cumbersome to carry. But uh, but yeah, yeah, and most of those are are coil. You yeah. know, my sister's birthday was two days ago, and uh, she lives in Missouri. But about um, two months ago, I met some, some friends, and uh, they were cleaning their garage, and I was looking at this basket, and they kept picking it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I should ask them what they want for it, you know, because I had collected a few baskets and gave them to my sister because she collects Indian art. I do beadwork myself. But... Yeah, you say, hey, Rich, you want that, that basket over there? Yeah, I don't want that basket. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't know who made it or what made it, but to me, from the basket, I did, to me, it reminded me of something of Northern California, yeah. maybe in Koopa or your rock around yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, it's, I, I, show, I took it to my mom's, and my mom mailed it to my sister, so I'm sure she got it, but it... It had a it had a pattern like a star in the middle, yeah. and, and then uh, one of the points turned into a square. Yeah. Um, now a, a star in the base. Some some families used a star almost like a um, a trademark. Okay. Um, my um, my grandmother's family yeah. was was the Osuna family okay. in San Diego County, yeah. and there's Osuna's Osuna's all over. Um, very prolific people, um, um, and they uh, most of the baskets they made, they did put a, a five-pointed star. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. It was kind of shaped like that, uh, in between the one in front of you and the, the big one on the end. Yeah, and that's about how big that basket was. You know, the bigger. Big, than, yeah, uh, look, look smaller than that. Yeah. Now, now this this is a very typical utility basket. Uh, I put that in there if you want to see. Uh, Was that they, used for acorn stuff? A little of everything. Um, yeah, okay. Now, probably not acorn because acorns have a lot of oil. Oh, okay. um, and um, um, usually uh, they would use uh, something in this shape, only much bigger. Okay. Uh, and. Um, um, to uh, when you're um, preparing acorns, you you, um, uh, you pound it into a, uh, a we, we we call it shall we yeah. um, uh, the Kauai call it we wish, and uh, then you have to flush out the tannin. Yeah. And uh, I flush it out with hot water okay. because it's faster. Yeah. And some acorns. You have to flush ten different times to get all that that tannin out because the tannin's bitter. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. it is. So I bet you've eaten yeah. mush before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now it depends on on the acorn because yeah. a lot of times when I'm hunting deer, there's one species of oak I'll chew on it yeah. um, that I like to, the flavor of it, yeah. and and it's a little bit bitter, but so is beer. Yeah, so I had venison with it when I <laughs> okay. ate it. So, yeah, but was... when you when you cook acorns, um, uh, you normally just boil it, um, and the boiling brings out. The fat in in the uh, in the acorns, so you'll see um, old baskets that are just completely covered on the inside with with uh, grease. Yeah. And and if that's the case, you know that. Um, uh, and acorns were used almost all over California. In fact, all over the West. Uh, but this was, was it may have been. Uh, uh, I don't know how much it was used because it's too clean. Yeah. Uh, okay, that, uh, that answers them. Yeah. Oh, instant, um, uh, sometimes you'll hear crazy guys like myself um, talk about baskets having spirits. Um, and um, uh, it, if, you're, if you make a basket, uh, most people kind of put their own personality into that basket. Uh, and the basket many times will will accept your personality, and it grows as as you make it. Uh, and I started to make a basket one time, and I wanted to put a five pointed star, uh, in. but in a, in a coiled basket, because the stitch slants at an angle, if you're coming up this way with your pattern, then it's stair stamped. But when it's coming down this way, then it's smooth. So you have to be kind of careful about getting symmetry. Okay, so uh, so I uh, took my protractor and I made a perfect five-pointed star and I cut it out of, of a hard craft paper. And I used it as a guide. And I had it out about so big and the points were coming, coming out pretty much like this. And there were five points, and <clears throat> and I went out one time to work on it, and there were six points, six. Uh, and so you have to stop and think. Now <laughs> I'm sure that there were five because I've got the pattern here. That um, yeah. okay, but there were six, and they were nice, well constructed, and even. Okay. And so uh, I left it alone, and maybe three or four months later, I went back to it. And where, where the points of the star had been coming out like this, now they were diamonds, like, like this. And there were still six of them, but now instead of being solid in the, in the middle, they came to a point in the middle. Now, uh, when, when you're working on a basket and you see something like that happening, then you better reconsider. <laughs> 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 I still have the basket, and it's still, <laughs> still the same way that uh, because it it was telling me I don't want a five pointed star in me. Yeah. And when reconstructing uh, itself. Huh? Well, I I used to have an engineering firm, and um, uh, 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 it was a corporation, and because I owned it, then um, um, I could do what I wanted with it. So I had one room that was about the size of this um, that I used for a museum. Uh, and there were times when uh, uh, you'd go in there and you'd look at a basket and it would really be beaming, you know, it, um, it was just smiling at you. Uh, the, the next time you went in, it gave you this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you wonder what in the world is <laughs> and that's that's the personality of it um, uh, it's just like a kid that um, you know one day you're, you're a friend one day you're not and, um, uh, so um, uh, baskets have a personality uh, I owned a basket or I bought a basket one time in San Bernardino and um, uh, from an antique mall, 
and the lady that worked there um, was a, uh, well, there were two ladies, they were both Cherokee. And one of them was co uh, collected, and if a basket came in, um, the, the, one of those ladies would buy it up quick. So I went in one day and, and asked them um, uh, if there was any baskets, and she said no. Um, she said, the guy came in, and but I bought it. And I said, well, what about that one that's back there? And she said, no, there aren't any back there. I said, yes, there is. Uh, she said, no, they're not. I said, come on, I love it. I took her back, and um, in, in a case down below was this basket. And she says, I don't know how it got there. She said, because I, I see every basket that comes in. And she says, I buy them all. And, um, um, and yet that basket, I knew, I knew the, what the basket looked like, and I knew where it was as soon as I walked in that door. And that shows you what, what personality these, 